Hey friends! My name is Desiree aka Mama Friendly and I do all sorts of videos on this channel from cooking videos to planner videos, vlogs, hauls, homeschool videos with a Disney twist, a little bit of everything. So if any of this sounds like fun to you, I hope that you'll subscribe and join me on my YouTube adventure. Today's video is a continuation of a series that I started this year officially because I do have a few other recipes that fit the same bill, I guess, but I'm intentionally trying to bring you guys a new Disney park recipe every month, but the twist is that I'm adapting it to be gluten and dairy free so that I can eat it. Because usually when I go to the parks, I'm stuck with the allergy friendly chicken tenders and all I can do is lust after all the delicious Disney treats that everybody else always looks forward to because I have allergies and I can't eat them. I'm gonna post a link to the playlist where I'm collecting all these recipes up here in the corner and I'm also gonna put them in the description box below. I'm really, really excited about this month's recipe because because it just it turned out so good and I hadn't had one of these in years. The recipe that I want to show you today is a Disney World exclusive. I looked, maybe I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but I looked around and it turns out you can't find this at Disneyland or any other place in the world. It used to only be found at the Rider Stop at Disney's Hollywood Studios here in Orlando, but now it's available at the Trolley Car Cafe, which is... Hollywood Studios version of Starbucks. If you know, you know. I'm talking about the carrot cake cookie. But in case you don't know, let me show you a picture of what it actually looks like, the actual food that you get at the park. It's two carrot cake cookies, and in between they have cream cheese frosting, so it's like a sandwich. They are so delicious, so decadent, you have to share them because they're also so rich that it's pretty much impossible to eat one by yourself. And I found a recipe online that I didn't have to, well, I didn't have to adapt it, but I adapted it anyways because it was a vegan gluten-free recipe and I'm not vegan, I'm just dairy-free. If you are vegan though, I'm gonna post the original recipe in the description box as well so you could check it out, but I will let you know what changes I made so that it would fit my particular lifestyle. In any case, this recipe was so super simple, really, really delicious. I cannot wait to share it with you guys. So let me show you how I made Disney Hollywood Studios carrot cake cookies. So this is going to be interesting because I'm going to do my best to adapt an already adapted recipe. I found something online that shows you how to make gluten-free and vegan carrot cake cookie sandwiches. Now I'm not going for vegan per se, although I do search vegan recipes a lot because that's the easiest way to ensure that something is dairy free, but I don't have egg replacer, so I'm gonna use an actual egg. And hopefully the measurements, I mean, it's hard to measure egg besides just one unit, two units. So hopefully that works out. Um, let me tell you what I'm going to work with and I'll also let you know how that deviates from the recipe I'm meant to be following. I'll post that recipe link in the description box below in case you're interested in making it straight up vegan. So we need the one and a half teaspoons of egg replacer, but I'm going to use one egg. I think that's, that feels like too much egg, but like I said, we'll find out together if that's true or not. We need five teaspoons of water one and three quarter cup of all-purpose gluten-free flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. If your gluten-free blend does not have xanthan gum, you're gonna want a quarter teaspoon of that. We want one and a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, a cup of sugar, which I forgot to take the sugar out, but we're gonna use one cup of cane sugar, a third of a cup of room temperature dairy-free butter. This is my favorite brand three tablespoons of a light oil. So I'm using avocado, you can use sunflower, canola, a light olive oil, whatever you have on hand. Half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a quarter cup of crushed pineapple. You wanna make sure that you drain this really, really well though. It says to use a quarter cup of crushed walnuts and a quarter cup of raisins or craisins, but the ones at Disney World don't have either, so I'm just going to omit those ingredients. And then lastly, you're gonna need a cup, 
of shredded carrots. Now these are just the ingredients for the cookie part. There's gonna be a separate set of ingredients for the cream cheese frosting, but I'll tell you about that later once we get to that part. First, we're preheating our oven to 375 and if you need to drain your pineapple shred your carrots I suggest you do it now before you start so everything's just ready for you and at hand when you need it we're going to well make your egg replacer first off if you want to use egg replacer and then you're gonna whisk together all of your dry ingredients so the flour the xanthan gum if you need it baking powder, baking soda, and cinnamon. That's all gonna go into a bowl and then we're gonna set this aside so that we can get our wet ingredients ready too. a second bowl and I decided to weigh my softened butter it's 75 grams by the way a third of a cup just in case you're curious and so I'm gonna cream together my butter my oil and my sugar until it's light and fluffy you could do this with a hand mixer but I decided to just do it with a fork once it gets to that point you can add in your egg or egg replacer and your vanilla to mix until everything is fluffy and combined if you are using a stand mixer make sure that you get a rubber spatula so you could scrape down the sides as you need to so now you want to go ahead and add your dry ingredients if you're using a stand mixer or a hand mixer you would want to mix this on medium low if you're using your hand I'm willing to bet you're not going to go too much faster than medium low anyway, so you're fine. Regardless of what you're using, just make sure you scrape down the sides as necessary. So you can see I switched from a fork to a spatula here to kind of facilitate getting everything properly combined. It makes a very, very thick dough. I was worried for a moment that it might actually be too firm. But after this step, we're going to put in our mix-ins, so our shredded carrots and our crushed pineapple, and that's going to add in enough moisture where it's going to start to feel like a proper cookie dough. So if you are using a stand mixer or a hand mixer, make sure you do this on low because you don't want to break up the carrots too much. two cookie sheets that I've just prepared by laying down some parchment paper so that the cookies don't stick and I have a little cookie dough scoop here so that they're as uniform as they can possibly be. I was also a little worried about this because those jagged chunks of carrot sticking out of all the cookie dough balls I thought there's no way that this is going to create like pretty round cookies that are going to be able to fit together as a sandwich but the cookies do spread a little bit while they bake so don't worry even if it looks like spider legs coming out of your cookie dough, it's going to be just fine. It's going to puff up and even out. So I've put them in the oven for six minutes and at the end of the six minutes, I'm supposed to take them out, rotate the trays and put them back in for another six to eight minutes. I did taste the raw cookie dough. I know, raw egg, you're not supposed to, but I gave it a little taste and based on the flavor, these are gonna be incredible. So I'm very, very excited. They turned out much prettier and rounder and fluffier than I thought, with the exception of a couple. Um, and I'm supposed to wait for them to cool down before I frost them. It's really, really hot, but this one's super ugly and I don't want to wait, so I want to taste it just on its own. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, that's so good. It's really hot, but that's so good just on its own. With the cream cheese frosting, it's gonna be, it's gonna be intense. I'm very excited for this. I don't know if I said that already, but it's still true. It's been about a half hour, so I'm going to attempt to make the frosting now. I'm gonna go analog style. I should be using a hand mixer for this, but hubby's still napping, so I'm gonna try to do it just with a fork. I'm going to use a third of a cup of room temperature butter. Uh, we already established that that's about 75 grams. We need three ounces of cream cheese. So this is, again, Kite Hill's my favorite brand of dairy-free anything, really. So that's what I'm going to use. We need a cup of confectioner's or powdered sugar. And I actually used the last of my vanilla extract on the cookies. So we need a third of a teaspoon, but I have actual vanilla bean. 
So I'm gonna scrape some of this out and put it in here. We're just gonna beat it all together until it's smooth and we're going to use it to make sandwiches out of those cookies. It can probably stand to be smoother, but that's probably just because I didn't sift the sugar. The recipe didn't remind me to, so I didn't do it. But you can see all those little specks. That's the vanilla bean, so this is going to be like very intensely vanilla flavored. There you have it guys these cookies were so good they were so good how good were they you ask well let me tell you i actually kept well let's be frank i ate like three of them <laughs> and then i said okay obviously i can't keep these around i can't trust myself around these cookies so i kept one more i put it in the fridge and i took the rest of them to my parents house when I tell you that they actually argued over who would eat the last one and everybody was kind of pointing fingers like that Spider-Man meme, like, did you, how many did you have? Did you eat mine? How, did you get all of yours? I thought I had more left. They were so good. And they eat gluten and dairy, by the way. So they could have any sweets anytime they want without restriction. And they were fighting over these cookies, if that doesn't say it all. I will absolutely make these again, although I'll make sure to do it when there's people <laughs> around. I passed the recipe along to my sister because she's having an Easter themed birthday party for my littlest nephew this year. His birthday is on Easter week. So she's thinking of making them herself too. Amazing, amazing recipe. I'm so glad that I found it. I'm so glad that the tweaks I made to it worked out. And I'm glad I'm able to share it with you guys because if you've been missing these two, now you're able to have them as well right at home. If there's a particular Disney park food that you'd like to see me try to adapt next, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to find a way. But in the meantime, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope that you will please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you would subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye.